Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining. My name is Anthony Chuli, Director of Product Marketing here at 250 OK. And today I'm joined by two esteemed colleagues. I'll allow you to introduce yourself. My name is Alex Hines. I'm a uh, solutions architect here at 250OK. OK. I'm Sri the Chandran. You can call me Sri. I'm the solutions architect at 250OK. OK. Thanks for joining, guys. Welcome. Absolutely. So today we're going to have a really interesting topic around uh, the evolution of the email industry itself and an overview. Take a look back at some of the things that have been changing recently, both from the ESP and ISP or mailbox provider perspective, uh, and what that means for, for marketers. And I think it's one of these topics where a lot of marketers may not be paying attention to this stuff or aware of these changes, um, but I certainly think it's something that they should be aware of, and, and it certainly could have implications of how they're thinking about targeting and marketing to their subscriber base. And what's great here is we have a very unique perspective between the both of you. Uh, Alex, you coming from the ESP world, uh, yeah. previously working at, a, I was working at Adobe, Adobe, correct? For many years, yeah. And then Shri coming from uh, the AOL Postmaster team from the ISP world. So I think this is a really cool conversation dynamic to have. And uh, I think the perspectives from both sides of the fence will certainly help. Uh, formulate kind of a, a rich conversation about some of these things. So uh, with that, Alex, I wanted to start with you. From an ESP standpoint, there's been a, a healthy amount of consolidation in the past few years, the past decade, of some big major service providers being acquired or merging. Um, and I wanted to just kind of get your take on why you think that is and, and if if that is a trend that you, th you think will continue. Yeah. Uh, so. I really see all that coming together as, you know, all these big major providers kind of all do things pretty well on their own. Each of them has all their own strengths, but some present data to you a little bit better, but they can't really deliver the mail in the way that you think that they should be delivering mail. So when you see these things coming together in the back end, like you get a better product out of that. You know, you get like Adobe. Adobe acquired a much smaller company to really bring in that email service providing end of it, but they use that Adobe Gloss on top of a lot of things to really bring together the visual level. So it's, I think that the future of it is just more providing the, the marketer to kind of keep everything in one house, be able to deliver that product inside of that one house and kind of have it all executed with really, I mean, professional, pristine emails that are coming out of there at the throughput rate that they think they should be having. And I think a lot of times for me, it's it's when I when I read the headlines and, and kind of see what's happening, it's sometimes it's almost easier to acquire a another pro platform or provider that is a gap in your current service model oh, yeah. rather than trying to build it net new. Yeah, no, it's uh, nearly impossible to start building those things out from scratch at this point. You know, a lot of companies they just don't have the resources to build out an MTA that's as powerful as you know a Power MTA or you know Spark Post, Message Systems, that sort of thing. So. They really try to find things that have that strength already there and then bring it together and combine it with whatever they're bringing to the table. Yep. And Sri, shifting gears and talking about the, the ISP landscape, there's certainly been a, a number of domains and webmail providers that have retired or sunsetted their service providers or their service domains, excuse me, the past few years. Um, but also a, a healthy amount of mergers between some fairly well-known properties, right? So we've got uh, Oath, which is most recent, uh, it's a Verizon subsidiary. It's the umbrella company for, for Yahoo and AOL's digital properties. Um, we've also have recently the Microsoft platform, so the Office 365 and the Hotmail and the Outlook.com infrastructures kind of merging and sharing. Um, from, from your experience from an, from an ISP's perspective, uh, kind of the same question back to, to Alex. Why do you think there is those, those consolidations and mergers, and what are your views on uh, how that will continue to play out? So uh, we are living in interesting times, at least on the uh, ISP, the mailbox providers uh, world, because uh, these are, you have to uh, understand these are two big entities that are merging. And uh, it's, not, uh, it's not simple, it's pretty difficult, uh, because uh, there's a lot, a lot of these uh, ISPs uh, uh, have a lot of vanity domains with them, and just merging them together is a lot of effort. So uh, where I see this going is it, it is good for the senders at least, because yes, you have only uh, to take care of one filter instead of two, or in this, in this case, four has become two filters. So right. it's, it's pretty interesting for the senders. And uh, even for the ISPs also, see, the uh, main goal for us from an anti-spam perspective is just fighting the bad mail, the bad senders. So we have a consolidated infrastructure targeting uh, a much more wider audience, the spammers, and I guess it's it's a it's a good direction that we're heading to. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would reflect on my own personal experience that I can't imagine the transition of folding multiple big properties into one, and it's it doesn't happen overnight, and there's always some hiccups that that we feel on the deliverability services side often oh, yeah. or uh, on the customer <laughs> success teams. And, and it's certainly a struggle a lot of times for marketers, right? Mail will erroneously bounce or there'll be false positives or there's throttling issues that no one really understands why it's happening. And it's, uh, it's very difficult during that process. But, but looking at it in a glass half full standpoint, I think there's two things. One is, uh, you, you touched on this a little bit, it's, it's less domains, less unique filtering to care about. So when multiple properties merge into one, uh, in a way it almost simplifies delivering mail. Um, and I, and I, I think the other point that certainly is important for me is the data consolidation piece. Whereas historically, Yahoo's got their set of data, they're not gonna share that with AOL, they're not gonna share that with Verizon, and when you have these mergers and acquisitions, now it's, it's kind of a consolidation of all these data streams that really can make not only the infrastructure and the filtering better, uh, but also perhaps future features and enhancements to the UI of a new Absolutely. mailbox provider. Absolutely. So uh, you just mentioned about all the different kind of uh, errors and bounce codes that you used to get. So just imagine when, just when I came to the, uh, towards the uh, sender side, I was, number of error codes, <laughs> I, I had a tunnel vision of the AOL it's error codes. Was, yeah. yeah, it was yeah. pretty. <laughs> but now, uh, so it's good at that these are merging together. You have lesser error codes to fight with. And the second thing is with, uh, the good, uh, the good thing about these mergers is that uh, the technology moving forward with a lot of things getting automated with AI in picture, right. uh, the error codes are going to be much more simpler. So it's going to make the lives of the marketers much more easier. So it all boils down to uh, the basics of email sending. That is, uh, you got all your best practices in place and then you move on a little ahead and look into your segmentation, so on. So it becomes a little more, uh, the, whole, uh, in, uh, the whole landscape becomes a, a little more better for the senders is what I feel, yeah. One of the things I wanted to get both of your takes on, and, and I'll certainly weigh in here as well, is we talked about ESP consolidations and mergers and the ISP world and domains and, and webmail properties, but we're also almost seeing that now with, uh, with tools themselves. And we're starting to see this trend of, of vendors that are incorporating and folding in multiple different tools into one roof, if you will, or under one roof, uh, which makes it certainly easier for a marketer to partner with a specific vendor that can do multiple things and be versatile rather than having to partner with five, six, seven unique specific vendors that all provide a specific service uh, in addition to their large ESP platform. So uh, even from an ESP side, Alex, maybe you can kind of weigh in on, on why do you think that is and do you think that's a trend that will continue? Yeah, I mean, on the ESP side, they, every ESP I've ever worked with has sort of a layer of ways of contextualizing some data in there, whether it's simple design tests or simple blacklist checks, all these sort of things that just never got fleshed out. They're not super robust on that end. And so you'd have to go out and reach and find different companies that could facilitate all of these different needs for you. And as a marketer, it, it's... It's terrible. It's a bad right. user experience, yeah, right? Yeah. You, have, you have all these different logins. You, you can't remember which one is which. You don't remember which one's reports you like. It's, it's kind of all spread out there. So you just, you don't use them. Use one or two. You find kind of what you like and what facilitates your daily needs. But then you miss everything else. So as it's all coming together, as a, as a sender, as a marketer, as somebody working on deliverability projects, having all that stuff in one place, it's great because then you can tie all these things together. Yeah, you send out your design test, you kind of figure out why it didn't work, and then you can look at things like your seed testing, and you can figure out, okay, here's where we were before, now I can figure out why we're getting spam, you know, why this is getting marked, and it might not just be my design, it might be this whole ecosystem I wasn't really looking at beforehand. And that's kind of, it's, I mean, it's great, it's, it's awesome for us, because it makes my life so much easier, because I don't have to reach out to all these different places. I can have these great reports and I can have these really cool utilities just waiting there for me. But in the ESP, they don't really focus on integrating all that right. sort of stuff. It's not their game. It's not really that important to them. For them, it's really just making a rock solid product to get that stuff out the door. The monitoring, the, you know, the work that goes on after that and before that really is outside tools. 
And so it's great to have them all in one place. And a lot of companies are pushing towards that. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting you brought that because even in the uh, receiving end, uh, if you look at the traditional kind of data points that you had, like an IP-based feedback loop, that's yeah. out of the picture right now. Yeah. So it's more, we are more moving towards a domain-based feedback loop. You have s and in picture. So there's a lot of data over here. And if you have tools that funnel all the data in, yeah. it's pretty good, I guess. Yeah. And it's, it's the common theme, right? Even from a data perspective, there's consolidation. And, yeah. uh, you know, you touched on traditional feedback loops, IP-based feedback loops are shifting to domain-based and certainly the case with, with Oath. Um, I think it's, it's the continued evolution of the more data sets that you have at your disposal, we're baking that down and creating new ways to maximize email performance or monitor or report. Yeah. And I, I certainly think it's a it's a win-win situation, really, depending on who you are. But it it's, it's interesting that this trend permeates through ESPs, through ISPs, through... Uh, data providers, it's more of a consolidation. And I think what that means for a marketer, if we take a step back, is not only is there less choices, right? There's just less number of ESPs. Uh, there's there's less mailbox providers or ISPs to care about or try to reverse engineer yeah. or deliver to. Um, but it, for me, it, it's almost an, it, it's an easier way to to operate your marketing program because it's just less things they have to care about. Oh yeah, um, there's fewer bounce codes. Which is <laughs> yeah, my I mean it's great. Thing out of all right? of this, yeah. less and I postmaster think, yeah. tools there's or new less, postmaster tools. There's less things true, to true. decipher, yeah. and you get more of a clear picture Absolutely. of what's going on. Absolutely, and I think it's going to move away from your traditional block list too, because uh, it, I think we've figured out the major spam problem. It's just a gray mail that's still giving a problem at the receiver's end. Right. So it's always going to be about the last mile connectivity. And I think that's where if tools can give you that kind of overview of the data, that what happened to your mail after it reached the receiver's end. Is it going to the inbox? Is it going to the spam folder? Or why? That's where we can, there's so much data available in the tools. And I think people should start looking at that now rather than just looking at the if I'm getting blocked or not, because I'm pretty sure uh, there's, of course, Google has already done it. It's not just about blocks, right? Absolutely. And I'm pretty yeah. sure with AI in the picture, it, or machine learning in the picture, it's going to change the way that marketers need to think about the d delivery. It's going to be the last mile delivery that matters. And that's a perfect tangent into what I want to close with, with, with each of you is, uh, kind of what you think the continued evolution or future holds. And one of the things that I've certainly noticed is, uh, and, and it fits perfectly in with what you just said, Shri, is the more data at disposal, new features and innovation come with that. And as always, right, Google and Gmail tends to lead the way from a mailbox provider's perspective. Uh, and with their new redesign, they're incorporating in AI reminders about inactivity, if you haven't engaged with an email in 30 days, they're notifying you. There's new smart replies and smart compose that make it easier for a subscriber to manage their emails, whether it's composing or reading. And so I think the AI and the machine learning piece is continue is going to continue permeating itself within the at least the webmail provider perspective. And I certainly think it's probably relevant from an ESP perspective oh, yeah. where most, if not all, of your major marketing clouds are folding that in yeah, into the workflow. Yeah, they all have some, some sort of AI that they're moving into personalization, contextualizing emails for people that they're gonna be sending out to so people actually get stuff that they enjoy and really like. But yeah, that AI is it's finding its way into everything. Right, would you agree? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, we now have all the uh, technological uh, power that we can go ahead and look in the weeds what the actual issue with spam is and delivery is that I think most of the ISPs, are, most of them are already there. They've started the process. And uh, I think a lot of few niggling issues that you see with delivery right now is related to that. But in the long run, I think that it's going to be a much uh, uh, better world for the marketers. Yeah, I, I certainly feel that. And I think it's only getting smarter and more sophisticated. And, you know, in layman's yeah. terms, right, uh, there's very few emails that I get in my inbox that shouldn't be there. Yeah, it's and changing. It's <laughs> it's only getting better, right? I mean, there's still the occasional false positive, but the machine learning, the AI, the filter, the data sets that are powering these decisions from a mailbox provider's perspective, 
are only getting better and more sophisticated, not only combating spam, but just combating what I call wanted mail versus unwanted mail. Um, so there's there's yeah, been that so shift if too. You, if you just look at the, how we have uh, progressed with the authentication, authentication standards uh, over the last few years with uh, uh, DMARC and ARC and BIMI and so on, so I think we, uh, we have figured that particular part out where if we have all the best practices and your authentications in place, and if you are following the best practices, well, yeah. and They're if you, you are, now, if you, if you <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, and if you have everything in place, and if you uh, uh, are a legit sender, you should not have an issue with yeah. the traditional delivery. Great. Well, I want to thank you guys so much, and hopefully yeah, for the audience you. tuning in, this was very helpful in kind of understanding maybe a little bit beneath the surface about what's going on in the email space and the industry, whether it's the ESP world, the ISP world, the data consolidation, tool consolidation. Uh, it's, it's certainly becoming more of an intimate ecosystem within email. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this information was very helpful for you to maximize email performance, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.